it's so weird because like both of you look a lot different in real life than you do on like camera. <laughs> what appearance wise? <laughs> yeah, like. Like, give, so give more, give me more. <laughs> no, like, like, see, even like, Nelly, and for example, Nelly, like, you see Nelly on camera, and you see Nelly in real life, it's like, whoa. Looks really rough on camera. <laughs> oh, no, no, that's <laughs> We are, yeah, we're pretty famous. <laughs> yeah, so I can see, I can see why we can't you walk Do you have Snapchat? Yeah. Okay. What's well, so then? You can. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Stop it. How has been getting mentored by the famous Emily Scarlett oh, been for you? Yeah, I mean, Beyonce of the rugby world, you know? <laughs> No, but no. I've had a lot of fun. Oh I think, my god! I think I think um, I'm sorry. I don't Do not apologise. <laughs> I'm here at Edinburgh Uni for our third and final stop on the Empower Her tour in partnership with our very good friends at Vodafone. Joining me today are Loughborough teammates and fellow mentors on the programme, Scotland captain Rachel Malcolm and Scotland vice captain Helen Nelson, who actually came to university here. So let's go catch up with them and two of the Edinburgh girls who actually made it into the Scotland matchday squad, the Six Nations. And here we are, we have come inside. Rachel Malcolm, Scotty, Helen Nelson, Nelly have joined us. How are you guys? Very well, thank you. Very yeah, well. Thank you, yeah. Had a good morning? Chilly. Yeah. <laughs> no, but it's good fun. When the Scottish people say that, you know it's no, definitely chilly. I'm a bit of a rubbish Scottish person, to be fair. I'm always cold, but um, it was particularly cold today. I also learned earlier that you've never seen the silent bagpipes. I don't know. I do. I must have. I think it's just it's so natural to see. <laughs> yeah, them. like it's... we just see them everywhere. Yeah. I see them in my dreams. I see oh, them. okay. Bagpipes everywhere. All right, perfect. <laughs> right, well, anyway, today isn't about us three. Um, also welcome Kieran and Nicole, two of Edinburgh Uni's best players. I'm reading that from oh here. God. So wow. you've, got, you've got to claim that. Um, <laughs> you've been playing for the university side in the Women's National League, but also for Edinburgh in the Celtic Challenge and have formed part of Scotland's match day squad, the Six Nations. So welcome guys. And also Nicole, you're my mentee. Yeah, this is why we're have... here, the Empower Her programme. So um, back to uni. Back to uni, straight back into it. Um, weren't you saying earlier you've got a Saturday exam or something coming up? Yep. Um, got a desk due on Monday and then Friday exam, Saturday exam, and I'm done forever. Graduated. So. Did you cry about it last night? <laughs> <laughs> a lot, maybe. <laughs> Might have cried. <laughs> but talking of last night, you guys had your end of season. Give us the goss. Yeah, How are the heads? Yeah, Kieran, give us the goss. Um, Kieran, you only rocked up at midday, so there must be some. Um, no, I just was, <laughs> I just was resting. Um, no, we, it was our last end of season dinner. Well, my last end of season dinner. Um, got a little awards to finish it off, um, which was nice from Shanks to get coach's player. Um, nice. Yeah. Nobody asked you if you got an award. I know you just said that. Well, I that <laughs> Sorry, I just wanted to read that. I just didn't know if you knew or not. But yeah, no, it was a good end of season dinner. Sad, emotional, all the emotions. It's been a good four years. Um, I'll be sad to leave all the girls, but. We do have to put a little disclaimer out there. We did all bump into each other last night. Yeah. We were um, like, do we acknowledge her or do yeah. we just? <laughs> we, um, we, everyone saw you, uh, everyone saw you before, like we saw you yeah. and we were like, oh my and the gosh, Emily Scarrett's in, <laughs> Emily Scarrett's in, in Kitty's, what? We were, yeah, we were like, in the group chat, Emily Scarrett <laughs> and, and Kitty. And then I looked to my right and we like, you'll see this tower and I was like, whoa, we that's a really dull like, version. We were plan of action, what to do? Do we, we were like, do we, introduce ourselves or do we just wait and then you came to find out so I think that you was know, we were having the exact same conversation I was like I've never actually met Nicole in real life but I should definitely go over and say hello yeah. she texted me and she was like is there any chance that the Edinburgh you lot <laughs> might have just come in and I was like that is 100% where they'll be and I was like don't worry none of them know who you are anyway <laughs> to be fair there was a few people who didn't know who you were <laughs> fair enough um, but enough there was a lot of like the starstruck time. girls <laughs> there's a lot of girls that were pretty starstruck I think but funny Funny you were nice. surrounded. Was you were surrounded. surrounded. It was a good night. Nice to get out in Edinburgh and have a few a uh, few drinks. But today we've been obviously out doing some sessions. How were they? I know you weren't able to fully get stuck into them, but what did you think out there? I had fun. Yeah. Yeah, I liked the bit at the end, the um, the games. But can we also just let everyone know who won the games? Yeah. Rachel, who won the games? <laughs> I think. Overall, myself and Tash won the Was games. It? Yeah. it definitely wasn't Helen Helson over there. <laughs> um, I was sad I didn't get to do the um, the ball catch one. Yeah, you guys were I think that looked tricky. We had the extra challenge though, so the opposite team would kick the ball. 
<laughs> so Tash and Rach are kicking so the ball the to me and Lucy. To you. I would argue you that had the kicks to were <laughs> five meters. Oh, because yours time. were straight to me, were yeah, they? They were, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so funny. So obviously, we've all just come back from Six Nations. So captain and vice captain, how are these two? And then I want the reverse question. You guys, how were <laughs> the older <laughs> statesmen? Let, let's have the, the youngsters going to have the first shot. Oh, about them specifically. Yeah. Really. Um, everyone was actually really nice. I, I thought that I Rachel thought... was going to be quite scary. Yeah. But she's fine. You are quite scary. Why is it hard exterior? You look a lot yeah. different. And like, it's so weird because like both of you look a lot different in real life than you do on like camera. <laughs> What, appearance-wise? <laughs> yeah, like... like give, give more. Give me more. No, like, like see, even, like, Nell, and for example, Nelly, like, you see Nelly in camera and you see Nelly in real life, it's like, whoa. What's <laughs> different? I, just, she's I think she was very, starstruck. She's I think very, she's yeah, starstruck. I was very starstruck. I was um, like, oh, like, you just are so... <laughs> Nice face, you know. <laughs> nice face in real nice life. Face. Or nice face in real life. In real life. Better. Looks really rough on camera. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. I can't tell which is better for us, but no. But like, it, it's weird, like seeing people in real life that you see on the telly. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was a bit weird. Yeah, it was but... really weird. <laughs> Yeah, no, it's been really good. Like, we are, yeah, we're pretty famous. <laughs> here, so I can see, I can see why we can't joke. But did they look after you? Yeah, 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 definitely. Like we've definitely been looked after. And I think, yeah, everyone's been really nice to us. I think we didn't have any. We, I think we were a little bit nervous to come in, but yeah. girls so are really nice. So it's easier. Really we good. knew quite a lot of people anyway. So yeah, it is one thing that you guys speak a lot about in terms of like that Scottish culture, how much you all love each other and get on with each other and genuine friendships, etc. But obviously when youngsters come in, they're not naturally part of that group. So if you've immediately felt welcomed into that, that's that must be a huge thing that obviously you guys are trying to build as well. They outnumber us now, Skaz. So actually, yeah, we're in the <laughs> minority. So <laughs> yeah. But I think it's been like a really nice group of you guys coming through and you can see you're all quite comfortable because there is like a, a wee group of you you're together and then but like we integrate as well like we've got um our social group this year have been really good on a thursday we've had socials and it kind of mixes everyone in mm. and um yeah bridges that gap so it's been good nice and how have you found the youngsters then have you got any good stories on these two particular yeah <laughs> these two in particular this is your breath, man, I'm gonna breath of fresh air <laughs> <laughs> nicole why don't you um talk to us about the teapot situation no i was just having fun you know i was just <laughs> what were you having fun you, you need to ex kicking. explain it to everyone so none of us were there we we every monday chris <laughs> patterson comes in and gives us a kicking session with the backs and me and rona were in chris patterson scottish rugby legend, <laughs> yeah. rugby legend. me rona and nicole did you need to in. explain that to the, him to them no, 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 I knew who he was. Okay, yeah, fine. Kind of, yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Did you know who he was? Not just like how most people would maybe act around someone. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, but fine. anyway, we're it's just the context. Yeah. So me, Rona, and Nicole are at a station, kicking the ball back and forth. And then I think it was my goal. And I just hear this little like, I'm a little teapot. Oh my and I was God. like, what's going on? And then me and Rona just shoot each other a look. And I'm like, don't say anything. And she's there with the actions <laughs> up and down. And then like kind of like adjusting her arm to where the spout should be. For probably a good two minutes. <laughs> Where should the spout be? <laughs> I don't know. Probably a bit. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, um, I don't know. Sometimes I just lose my brain a little bit. You quite like like musical stuff, though, eh? Yeah. What was the other one? The oh, trumpet. I can play the trumpet. I you can my play mouth, it. Yeah. Without the trumpet, though. Go on. Oh, no, oh you can it on the spot. <laughs> She's actually really good at it. <laughs> And then so, everyone thought it was a flute, and it wasn't a flute. In the in the defense of like, <laughs> oh, oh, this is still in training. Still in yeah, training. Still training. In in the defense of like, oh. you know how seriously I take offense. You, yeah, very seriously. Yeah, <laughs> she is playing her trumpet. So yeah, that, so that was our introduction to Nicole. <laughs> but Guys, you're but I think, I had, I think, yeah, I think it came off across bad. But if you get to know Nicole, yeah, that's actually no. her focusing. That is actually that is. you in the zone. The trumpet focusing. is the switch. I think on. I would be more concerned about you if you weren't you yeah. weren't doing those things. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Is that a bad thing? Like right what now, would that be doing? Be like stressed. <laughs> <laughs> no, very stressed. I'm actually shaking. Your eyes are very wide. <laughs> Other than the teapot and the trumpet, obviously your guy's first inclusion in a Six Nations campaign, a Six Nations squad. Like, how was it with obviously the support and the following and the crowds and just being in that environment? Did that was that obviously different. I think you don't really realise what it was like until after the fact. Like, it was just surreal. Like I for, kind of forgot that I was playing for my country because in that moment it was like game face on. And then after the fact you're like, wait a minute, I was on the bench for Scotland, what? <laughs> but um, 
<laughs> I had a I had a lot of fun. Like a lot of people, a lot of people came up to me after it and was like, people would how much like that means to people and i like it really opened my eyes. But obviously at the time I was like, I need to play, I need to play, I need to play. But it's not always the case. It's not always about playing. It's about being there. Yeah, and the I think experience you've learned so cool. much from just being in that environment. Like even. So obviously for us playing at Twickenham, I'd never experienced that crowd and that walking and that driving at Twickenham. Um, and I know the Irish girls have spoken about it in terms of they were all literally like, oh my goodness. And obviously that potentially reflected itself on the, on the field. So I think to just immerse yourself in those um, experiences and opportunities is, is so valuable. We didn't have that, did we? We just basically, it happened all of a sudden and it was like, here we go. Yeah, no, literally. I think the change, I think, well, we've definitely felt the change in terms of, the support in the last probably the last year it's really gone from like we kind of had like a bit of a plateau a couple thousand like which was really cool and then suddenly it's gone like not nowhere near where you guys are at but for us in terms of like relative improvement is is massive um and even just like after the games the number of messages you get from like people that are like either watched or been inspired or like anything like that which is just super cool because i think particularly as like an older player like that's something that definitely is like inspiring me to keep playing at the minute is like the impact that we can have on other people out with our immediate group um so I think seeing that that we are having that is, is super cool um and I don't think like for me I never thought we'd sell out a stadium um in my time playing um because that's just like how quickly it has changed but that's not just down to us like it's also like the backing of you know Scottish rugby and like our all the team behind us as well so it's pretty cool how cool was that moment because th they always play Loch Lomond don't they so post anthems mm. before I, I'm a, I'm Scottish aren't I I'm basically Scottish yeah. I we wish was you were Scottish, gutted but... that I wasn't there <laughs> for that moment obviously didn't play in that game but um that must have been like stuff like that when you know the crowd is literally full or the stadium is yeah. full must have been ridiculous it's so good it's like it's honestly almost better than the anthem at yeah. times when that when Loch Lomond plays um but it was really special, like sold out, so loud. And like throughout the game as well, they pipe up, do it again. It like, was like just like a couple minutes before the end of the game. Yeah. And like we obviously were like quite far on the wrong end of the scoreline and feeling like a bit dejected. But the whole crowd like spontaneously mm. started singing the national anthem yeah. with like three minutes to go. So and it was just like, I don't know, I, like obviously you shouldn't be paying attention to that while you're playing rugby. But <laughs> I like it just, that was really cool. Because I was just like, it felt quite nice in that moment that although like we hadn't gone and got a result that we were necessarily proud of like they were still proud of us and like we'd yeah. still done them proud which was like so that's what that showed me while we're playing no the, the <laughs> lot <Lock> lower <Lomond laughs> one the one before the game uh, and i kind of like did we sing along, we sing oh, along? absolutely yeah, yeah. Cool. i think it's quite nice because it's and we're like, stood before we kick off i do yeah <laughs> there's just the two different mind oh. frames that just that I sums us up <laughs> I think captain it and vice captain. <laughs> I think it relaxes Two me. very different people, eh? Just take it in. Sing along. No, I do definitely take it in, but I wouldn't say I would sing along. <laughs> I'm usually steering someone out that's on the opposition at that point. <laughs> I would be singing along. <laughs> um, right, let's talk Bucks Women's National League. Um, for those of you who don't know, this is obviously the top level of uni rugby uh, in Britain. Great Britain, that's fair to say. Uh, so it finished off final at the Stone X. Hartbury beat Loughborough. So Hartbury... Overall champions. Um, how have you guys found this season playing in that? Is it something that, because it's the first time I've sort of been involved with a little bit of coaching and stuff. But I personally thought the level was brilliant. Yeah. Really good advert. I think almost the level keeps getting better every year. Like when we first started, it was already, it was like, this is a high level. But I think every year, like the new girls come in, like the freshers come in and the standard is higher and higher. Like this year, our freshers came in yeah. and they were way better than we ever were when we came in at first year. Um, but it was good this year. It's a little bit different. Sort of, we didn't play as much this year. We had a lot of our games before Christmas and then didn't play very much after, but we had a good, good. We, when we were going, we had a really good run. We played some, probably the best rugby we played in a long time um, at Edinburgh Uni here when we played Cardiff Met at home. Probably the best rugby we've played. Was it Cardiff Met? Yeah, yeah. no, sorry. I was, <laughs> I was just like, thinking <laughs> about the other teams that we played here. Yeah, but and, no, and it's beat, been a really good. Who did you beat? beat? Oh, we did oh. actually beat someone here. Yeah, yeah I think so. I think uh, that purple one? <laughs> yeah. I think we beat the purple one. <laughs> I was like, genuinely, no idea. <laughs> like, I was like, oh, exactly where they were going. <laughs> I was like, oh, yeah, sorry. Now, so obviously, you came here. You're an alumni. Have you seen a difference in probably the 
standard of rugby that you would have played at uni compared to not just the standard, but also the quality of the girls playing the game? Yeah, like without a doubt. Um, I think I thought it was absolutely top class when I played back in the day, but now like watching, I came to watch that um, Loughborough Ed uni game and I couldn't believe it. Mm. Like everything, like the defence, the double shots going in, like dominant hits and then like the kicking game. I don't think I'd kicked a ball the whole time I was at Edinburgh uni. I played <laughs> 10 for was, what is the kicking strategy? But like there's so much structure and like game understanding you can see. Um, and then as well, we were just hearing that you guys get the train or you fly everywhere. And we I was, need like, to I was on this. seven hour buses there and back, like in a day playing a game. It's just the whole thing has just become so they don't professional. Know they've been, they don't know they're born. Yeah. Like, sorry, can you just talk us through the travel <laughs> policy here at Edinburgh? Because obviously you are very far north in the country. Um, you have to travel everywhere. In the United Kingdom. In the United Kingdom. I think we, we fly. <laughs> <laughs> we fly, <laughs> we fly everywhere except Durham. Where we get a train. Exclusively playing girls. We just, yeah. Bristol Airport has pretty much been our home for the past. I am an easy jet girl. Yeah, we've we're <laughs> experienced travellers. We can do security in about two minutes. Like we've got it all down. I can see the whole, I can so, probably recite the whole easy jet thing. The bit that it goes, we've been in a lot of places. Like, the, the briefing. No, no, no. <laughs> I, just know, I just know the bit that it goes brace, brace. <laughs> That's my favourite bit. So I understand the Exeter one. That's like, yeah. incredibly far. But even when you come to... A Loughborough, you would fly to Loughborough. Actually, yeah, we know where Loughborough is. So. I've never been here before. <laughs> you guys don't know where it is. You just go to the <laughs> airport and arrive yeah, at like, So we just show up at, like, we meet at the airport, but I've been here for four years and I've never had a bus, never been on a bus. I think if Shank said we were getting a coach, we probably would, I don't know, spit on her or something. <laughs> 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 it would not like it would not go down well. Ooh, Just for context, nice, I've played for Loughborough Lightning in the Premiership for seven years, and I've stayed in a hotel once in that entire time. Like you guys are princesses. We are pampered. We're. I think you're going to get a wee bit of a reality shock next year when you go to a different club. Yeah, we do. You're in signs on for a masters. <laughs> She's like, I cannot I'm like, be going on a bus. I need to <laughs> sleep in a God hotel. <laughs> I need the hotel like experience before and then <laughs> we wake up and then we go to the game and then we come back and then we it's fly. just not normal uni living is no, it? no it's that? just not it's not gosh I we used to we used to play edinburgh away when i was at loughborough and like we would drive there and back on the same day you know i'm lucky <laughs> <laughs> no we used to, not, not for me <laughs> yeah and we just i couldn't do that one day <laughs> well, it's not good for team morale i think <laughs> Travel no, up. nothing about performance. Some of the best <laughs> things that happen happen on buses. Some of the best <laughs> things that happen happen on buses. Yes, it's true. Coaches or in the airport, sing alongs. <laughs> no, I no, think there's a lot of the other hours people. we spend in airports and the things we've spoken about in airports. We've been in the airports for hours. We definitely bonded in there. Mm. <laughs> you it sound like a tough game. Yeah, yeah. in Bristol Airport. Yeah, <laughs> honestly. So the reason we're all here today is because of the Empower Her project obviously sponsored and brought to us by Vodafone. The whole aim is to connect university players to the elite game. You guys are brilliant examples of that, obviously going on and being in Scotland Six Nations camp. Um, Vodafone Player Connect is obviously something, first of its kind pretty much, in terms of being able to monitor well-being, being able to monitor menstrual cycles, keeping track of all that sort of stuff that so often can just get lost, but is so important to all of our lives as performance athletes. You guys have obviously been using it. Can you tell us a little bit about it, how it's worked, what you've enjoyed? Yeah, um, so we ha I think it's just so easy that it's on an app as well. So we use the app and we track sort of everything that's going on. And I think it's really good because you don't have to speak to anyone to be like, listen, like I'm feeling a little bit. <laughs> but like you don't have to tell anyone how you're feeling. You just, like a special little thing where you just click on the body parts to say like what's feeling sore, like even just little niggles and it's, like you don't have to go to the physio and be like, oh, like my calf's a bit sore. If you just put in like you've, you're a bit domsy, then it's down and like everyone's checking that. Um, which is really good as well because I think it sort of like monitors your load as well to make sure like we do things outside of rugby as well. We've got so if there's girls doing different levels of training and then you put it in the app of what you're doing and then like obviously Shanks and her physios look over that and pick up anything that needs to be picked up. But I think it's been really good. Um, easy as well nice is it something that as a group like you've really bought into as well because obviously it requires people actually filling it out and being honest and yeah. then being able to pick up those conversations but it doesn't work unless you're actually buying into it as a group yeah no I think I mean Shanks was sending daily reminders to make <laughs> people please fill this in but I think as well. and Tash but I think we did buy into it and then That's my once you yeah Tash, <laughs> Tash is on it um, cool once you start doing it I think people set, people were like setting reminders on their phone setting alarms at like eight o'clock in the morning to get their thing you done and once it's done but 
definitely was a bit of nagging to start with, but now we've all like, used bought to, into it. I used to get like messages from Tash, like, do your monitoring. She'll be like, do it. You <laughs> like, have angle, to do it. <laughs> like, capital letters. I was like, oh my gosh. <laughs> Has Skaz not mentored you to know how important monitoring is? <laughs> 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 but I'm curious to know how has been getting mentored by the famous Emily Scarrett been oh, for you? Yeah, I mean, Beyonce of the rugby world, you know. <laughs> no, but no. I've, I've had a lot of fun. Oh I think, my God. <laughs> I think, I think um, I'm sorry, I don't know. <laughs> Do not apologise. <laughs> um, I think it made it a bit easier oh, when, wait. like, it was obviously quite hard to start because I was like, how do I message a famous person I need to put my words right <laughs> and then you're, you're emailing someone and how when you sign off the bottom of an email you always have to say like thank you thank you nicole thank you nicole and it's like gets really awkward after a while uh no. so no so don't know what you mean because i as an adult okay okay okay, okay 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 <laughs> okay but it made it a bit easier when like i i got your email from like the production crew and like, uh, uh, can we actually just a side note? Yeah. Well, we're just gonna say there's a no, question. Yeah, no, 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 this is, no, we'll come back to your point. Can you tell us actually what you asked the older members of the Scotland squad for when you joined our squad in the Six Nations? Their email addresses. Why did you ask us for our email because addresses? old people don't use like Snapchat and stuff. So she wanted you know? or thought that the rest of the squad above the age of what would you say about what was your threshold for emails so if you were above the age of 26 she thought that we communicated day to day via email <laughs> so she went around and asked us mid-training sessions what's your email address but we did actually have quite an education on the snapchat world i was world. gonna say you yeah. can learn quite One a lot about it was quite we hard. taught you guys a lot about red chats blue red chat, chats, blue chats on snapchat chats. do you know about them Oh God. I'm gonna time. sound like a, yeah. <laughs> we like don't use WhatsApp, but apparently you don't everyone use WhatsApp. Well, no, what? we told them we used WhatsApp and they burst out. Like, like, they really? WhatsApp. No, because if I was gonna, it was like if you were gonna, if I was gonna speak to Nicole, I wouldn't WhatsApp her and be like, "Hey, what are you up to?" Like I would just Nicole Snapchat. would be like a red chat galley. No, we're blue chat exclusively. You're blue chat. We no, are blue chat exclusively. Yeah. Um, but yeah, they said that they just only. I think. Did you say you've got like group chats on WhatsApp? Like I, we only use WhatsApp for rugby, and like work and my mum maybe. <laughs> <laughs> I WhatsApp my mum. <laughs> no, um, stop. No, honestly, Skaz, it was crazy. We were there for through. hours getting this education. It was quite wild. Mitchell was shocked. Like, you were shocked. I, I was shocked. Yeah. But even I like, I was, like, even like Rona Lloyd was there and she was like, she was, she was like, I've never felt so old in all my life. And Rona, I would say, is quite, she Rona keeps Snapchat. up to date. Yeah. She, she did add me on Snapchat, Snapchat instantly after that. Did you? Like, <laughs> <laughs> she came up to me the next day and she was like, Kieran, I've sent you a blue chat and you've not opened it. And I was like, oh, I didn't actually accept the request. She's really not I, good at Snapchat. <laughs> you know, Ro Rona added me to the GB7 group chat. On Snapchat. By accident. Yeah. That, did you, did like, you? quickly took me off of it. <laughs> no, I left it. it was, I was like, oh my God, guys, I'm <laughs> literally GB, I was GB7 for like five seconds. I was. But oh, Rona likes dear. to pretend, I think, that she's on her. Fair. Well, sorry, I've got to ask, what's a blue chat? Okay, so we're going to say, we actually don't use Snapchat that much. I'm not like a, but <laughs> Snapchat, so on Snapchat, you can type and like the thing. So that would be blue chat. So, and then you can send pictures. Do you have Snapchat? Yeah. Okay. So then you can. <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> Stop it. This literally came up last night because I Snapchatted and Shara was like, what are you doing? Yeah, so if you send like a picture on Snapchat, it would be yeah. a red, like it would be like a little red square that comes up. Whereas if you send, oh, yeah. if you're typing. And then purple it, is a video. Mm, there you go. Rachel didn't know that either. Don't you worry about me, Scotty. <laughs> don't you worry about me. Because um, you've got like a, there's a Scotland <laughs> group chat, isn't there? Which oh, I only yeah. found out about as well on Snapchat. Only yeah, for under 26. Straight into that. <laughs> but like, I've definitely been on it before, but I don't obviously see the content. On Snapchat? Yeah. Oh, you've been in it? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, we were instantly added to on that. Um, you're on, you're on a chat, you're <laughs> in it. She's in the chat. <laughs> um, you know, we got, I think, it's, like, it's the younger girls use it. Cause, like, Eva puts in quite a lot of stuff. Mm. Um, it's kind of just like funny videos of people caught off guard doing things. Mm. I think this is very valuable because this programme was always meant to be a two-way thing. <laughs> Yeah. You know, mentee, mentor, yeah. both of us learning <laughs> things from one another. Well, yeah. Snapchat. I was going to put a picture of Skaz and Kitty's last night and the that would have been Scotland iconic. group chat, but I didn't think that it would get taken. I don't know, I feel like it wouldn't be that funny if I put it in. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God, I'm Scaz. No, because no. I feel like I'm not established You're in the fine. group chat yet to be like, oh, that, that could be your defining moment. I know, yeah. but I don't want to ruin my chance. Expensive. <laughs> <laughs> um, sorry, funny. I did interrupt you mid you explaining how great Emily Scarlett's been as a mentor. Oh, so sorry. let's go back to that. Um, no, because I typed in her email address and her profile picture for her email is a rubber duck. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God, I love rubber ducks. 
And I was like, oh my God, maybe she's actually funny. <laughs> <laughs> maybe. Yeah. And then and then obviously we we like we had a call and we were talking about like what we want to get out, both want to get out of it. And then um, yeah, then we use now we use WhatsApp because then it's really fast. Oh, so you don't like using WhatsApp? No, I, I didn't get say it that. She said that. Would you, pref- like would you prefer would you to like communicate it? with Scaz over Snapchat? That will happen, just so you're aware. We can make it happen. WhatsApp's <laughs> easier, though, because then I can see what she said, because sometimes you would have to save chats in Snapchat, okay. and that's really embarrassing. <laughs> but, um, no, like, I, I feel like we asked, message you about running lines was the first thing. And that was before... You love coaching running lines? Love before running lines. I went, before I went into camp, like... I looked over everything and I was like, okay, I could do this. And I went into camp and I feel like that's probably one of the main things I got out of it. Like I came out and I was like, one thing that I've improved is probably my running lines. Nice. And guess what? Who got me that, guys? Emily Scarrett. <laughs> I would say that. To have a lens. Emily <laughs> Scarrett one. helped my <laughs> running lines. Wait. Emily Scarrett helped my running lines. <laughs> oh, yeah. So on the whole, it's been a good experience. I've had a lot of fun. Good, fantastic. There we are. What about you guys? Obviously, you guys have had mentees. You've been on the other side of it. Have you enjoyed it? What's been the big takeaways? Yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, I've obviously got Lucy. Um, oh my goodness, the rain is absolutely smashing it down now. Welcome to Scotland. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Sorry, now what were you saying? What was I saying? Um, yeah, so met for a couple of coffees with Lucy, and actually had a fair bit of like huddle back and forth as well, looking over clips and stuff, which nice. has been useful. So I've really enjoyed it. I hope she has mm. as well. Yeah. yeah, I've worked with Tash Logan, who's super keen. Um, and yeah, so we kind of caught up over video call of some format <laughs> um, at the Helen. start. <laughs> Um, when she was God, what's a WhatsApp video is that, would that be the worst of the worst no, I would I, never I would, like, I you would never answer it I'm pretty sure that's what I used to speak to Tash do you didn't on WhatsApp video call uh-huh. she likes not WhatsApp like Zoom no not Zoom Zoom is more official I think if I was saying he did Zoom no yeah but we didn't have numbers at that point she needed to check you're okay first um no sorry so Tash and I did a lot of chat over um, video call this was kind of during her Celtic challenge journey um which was real like cool because we could look at stuff that obviously she'd done at the weekend kind of help her set goals and stuff like that going into the next game and then review them afterwards um which was really cool because it actually felt quite like dynamic and um yeah and then obviously she got invited into camp which was was really like I think quite a surprise to her and um, but she was phenomenal like she's got such a brilliant attitude um, and she's like so diligent with like her preparation and stuff so I mean her got on like a house on, on, like, <laughs> on fire um, but like there's some like real key areas of her game that she's trying to work on so it was quite nice to have a bit more time with her like actually hands-on like after sessions and in sessions and stuff like that so yeah I've absolutely loved it amazing so good that's literally what this whole thing was about wasn't mm-hmm. it so I think we're all pretty chuffed that it's off the ground and we're running and we're all cracking on with it um girls thank you so much for joining us we're gonna sub you two out because we're actually gonna get in the boss play a quick shank and get the the real goss but before you go we've got you a little gsr scrunchie each oh Perfect. there you go <laughs> oh. <laughs> i enjoy this um, so thank but thank you so much um obviously all the very best of luck in the future going forwards with Edinburgh, with scotland and i'm sure we'll see you again soon Thank okay, you very much. You're welcome. So we've made a quick sub and joining us now is former Scotland player and now head of performance at Edinburgh Uni, Claire Crookshank, AKA Shanks. Definitely doesn't want to be called Claire. It's Shanks to us all. Um, but not the only hat you wear, you're also head coach of Edinburgh Rugby in the Celtic Challenge. And I've also been heading up the Scotland under 20 side. That's a lot of hats to wear. Welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Yeah, it's a few. It uh, definitely keeps me busy, that's for sure. Just a little bit, I imagine. How, how do you even go about trying to manage all of that? I imagine there's probably a lot of crossover with players and stuff, but fundamentally they're quite different things. Yeah, diff- different programmes, but there is a consistency with players, especially coming from the uni um, uni environment. The uni's got a partnership now with Edinburgh Rugby as well from the men's and women's side, so that that's starting to, to grow and develop. Um, and then within the 20s programme, there's a, a significant number of players who come through through here but yeah I love I love a planner uh, I love a spreadsheet so I'm, I'm pretty organized so I it definitely helps with juggling juggling all the roles 
So you've been coaching here for over a decade, yeah. which means you and Nelly have crossed paths yep. and coached. Have you got any dirt to <laughs> spill on her? Because Helen Nelson, she's she's a good egg, but you don't often get much dirt dragged up on her. <laughs> I, I think it's a lot probably, probably in the public implicate. I know, I'm like... <laughs> <laughs> saying <laughs> probably implicate myself if I was to give too many stories um no but I remember um we obviously have freshers week and I remember we'd had a freshers week already that weekend it was a a Monday evening and uh, this girl and I think I think maybe somebody else was leads with you Hattie was it Hattie I followed her down um we turned up a little bit late so you know red flag 101 for me <laughs> someone was late for a session um and I remember you had like you had leggings on, you had these like white uh, lion shorts, and we, we got you in, got you in training, and we're like, God, she's actually pretty good. We're like, um, do you fancy playing on Wednesday? And I think we played Northumbria um, on that Wednesday, and then stuck around for four years and played your four years at university. And then I think probably one of the, the nice things about Nels was that she. She had offered to, or been asked to go into the Scotland camp, but you were really loyal to the uni at that time. And it wasn't until you f we'd finished our Bucks season that you're like, yeah, I'll come and play for Scotland now. So kind of went through it all and then then played for, for Scotland after that. Just loved uni. <laughs> Bleed green. Yeah. That's very good. Skate. Cool. <laughs> yeah, literally. <laughs> no. One, one sounded a lot Wait, more fun sorry, than me. <laughs> sorry, Scotland. I've got four years of skate to get through before. I'm studying really hard. I can't think about playing for you. It's not how it was. It's not how it was. <laughs> no, you, you hate skate. Is it true that you first started here playing football? Well, I tried. Um, so basically, I came to uni and didn't really have like sport on my mind at all but then obviously sky <laughs> no <laughs> um it was like a couple a couple weeks in probably when i was like i'll try i want to try a team sport so i went along to football and no it was it was their trials but there was so many girls there didn't even get like an email text anything back it was like yeah not on the cards so then a couple more weeks go past and i was like oh i'll try rugby again like i played as a youngster and like I said, that Monday night went down. I think it was at Hannah Telling and Jenny I met in the car park. And I was like, oh, like, is this the rugby? Surprised she came back. I know. <laughs> um, but like totally hooked from that first session. I remember we were like tackling. And then, yeah, you were just like, let's, um, there's a game on Wednesday if you want to play. And I was like, 100%. And that was me in. Stuck Didn't around. Back. Yeah. Um, now, what are your memories of Shanks as a coach <laughs> in that impressionable time <laughs> in your life? Um, I think like very passionate that was always very clear and I think always wanted the best for everyone I think you knew that I wanted to take rugby a bit more seriously so then like gave me that advice because I had a few different people from Edinburgh clubs wanting to um, want me to go along but you were like no I think this one's the best fit whether that's because you played for <laughs> one days for a long time before as well <laughs> but um, very much put an arm around me and I think gave me that like solid advice um, that I needed so and you're still involved with the uni, aren't you? Because don't you help fund something? Oh, um, I sponsor actually Lucy, so yeah. um, who's been my mentee in this. But how does that work? Explain it to us. Well, uh, it's something we started this year yeah. um, just to help with club funds, probably to pay for the flying. Um, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. Now I know where all my money's going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you wouldn't yeah, need as many sponsors. First class flights. To, no, it doesn't. It just helps with the running costs. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so we brought it in this year and we, we put out to businesses to try and sponsor some players to essentially reduce the costs that they have to pay to play for the club. And um, I posted it on my Instagram and a few alumni came back saying, oh, we'd really like to sponsor somebody. So then I kind of matched players up best I could with positions or, you know, if someone said I'd like to sponsor X or Y, we... We did that. So, yeah, that's the sponsorship. And then just so happens you guys were matched together on the Empower Her bit as well. Yeah. That, that was total coincidence. I think so. Yeah. yeah. Very no, it's cool. very cool. I think, like, um, Edinburgh Uni is always something I've been very passionate about. And I think as a alumni, it's sometimes hard to know how to keep your hand in. So something like that is great. But then I said to you as well, as soon as I saw the Empower Her stuff come out, I was like, I'm so excited about this because I think... Edinburgh Uni is probably not given enough credit for what well, Andrew Shanks for um, what you've done for Scottish rugby over the years. I think the number of alumni and current players who have played for Scotland is. Do you know the number? Mm, no. No. Uh, what is it? I think, I think there's 13 current students and alumni in the current current squad. So, yeah. Um, yeah. No, I don't. I don't know the number. No. But, but it's like 
a lot a lot of girls and it's very much like being that feeder and pushing people into into performance rugby so it's um yeah i think credit where credit's due thank you so it's not good. always been not always been that easy we've definitely had some some tough times with numbers and, and things across the years but um yeah numbers are good we've got a third 15 um which is which is super exciting and those girls are girls who came to uni and never played rugby before so it's a different opportunity for them out of like interest out of like the people that have come through edinburgh uni what's like the best story if that makes sense have you had anyone come in like brand new to rugby i'm sure you've got a few but like the best kind of glow up i guess in terms of who've <laughs> ended up and, and gone on and done really well yeah like there's, there's obviously like people like nelly who'd come from either different sports or hadn't played for a long time but probably the ones um liz musgrove mm. so liz was a scholar at the university in athletics and I was the head of performance sport at that point, so I was doing rugby coaching on the side, and I knew Liz through that as one of her scholars. And then she said, "Oh, I think I'm going to give up athletics. I'm I'm not really I'm not really feeling it, but I thought I might try rugby." Um, and I knew she'd come from a judo background previous as well, so yeah, we got her along kind of a little bit similar. We got her along to like one training session, and it was before we had varsity. Um, and at that time, varsity was played at Murray Field and we'd get about there was about 10,000 spectators came to watch the men's and women's games so she came to train I think potentially on the Monday or Wednesday being like oh I'll come along to rugby and I was like right so we're going to put you on the bench on uh, Saturday in varsity at Murray Field and she's like what first touch of the ball gets the ball halfway line sprints scores <laughs> we're like yeah she could be she could be good and as we all know she's on, she is, yeah very good it's so good to hear so many of those stories. Obviously, the current one of the two girls we've just chatted to. How proud are you of their development? Obviously, their call up to the Scotland squad in the recent Six Nations and, and just their general development at the moment. Yeah, it's it's super exciting for, for them personally first. Um, but it's also it's the recognition from the university as well and the, the Bucks programme. You know, it, it does help produce players to go on and play international rugby. Uh, the the Celtic Challenge has obviously helped that as well, the step between university, club and international. But, uh, yeah, super proud of them. I think, you know, there's, there's there's more in the pipeline. There's other girls who are out there today, I think, who can step up relatively soon as well. Uh, we've just got to keep providing them the opportunities and, and, you know, give them all the tools that when they do step up, like these two have, they're ready for it and they, they embrace it and they enjoy being there. Is that one of the big reasons you do the job you do? Yeah, definitely. I, I love... I love coaching. I fell into it. Um, I never wanted to coach. I wanted to be. I actually wanted to be a PE teacher. I didn't get into that and started in sport development. Got injured and then did some coaching around my club. And I just I enjoyed it. And then I was like, oh, actually, I think I'm actually okay at this as well. And I just enjoy helping people. Um, I enjoy creating an environment where they can they can be themselves. They can have fun. Um, it's sometimes hard work, but. It's also um, just making them better, and hopefully that's something this programme does. Well, I think it's, yeah, all the names that everybody's just spoken about, I think the programme definitely does that, and you are a huge part of that. What do you think some of the biggest challenges are? Obviously, we've been around the United Kingdom with um, this in power, <laughs> <laughs> spoken to different universities. Obviously, everybody has their challenges, whether it's uh, geographic, whether it's money, whether it's whatever. Obviously, travel isn't one of your... Problem, <laughs> but like, what, what are the what are the things that kind of I guess you get you get stuck with a bit here? What are the what prevents people coming here? What how do you like lose them? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like all those sorts of things. Uh, it's it's a it's a selling point, but it's also a a, a big challenge. Is the uh, the university's world world ranking? It's one of the top universities in the world. So the academic attainment level and you know to get in here is is really tough. It's it's up there with, with Oxford and Cambridge and think it actually might be harder in some cases to get in here. So, you know, we do have players who would like to come to Edinburgh for, for the rugby programme, but unfortunately we just, the university won't bend on the academic level and, and rightly so, it's a world top 20 uni for a reason. So that's always a bit of a challenge, but it also is a, a real selling point or a real plus in our programme. And from a coaching point of view, we've got got players who, who want to learn, who are used to, um, solving problems who want to just get better so that that definitely helps helps as well it's without doubt the best university in scotland and and, and arguably 
like contends with the likes of your Loughboroughs and, and Hartbury's yeah. as well in terms of the support it can provide to, to athletes who are serious about their sport. Is the, the Celtic Challenge now going to help more with that? I know we were chatting a bit earlier in terms of people need a feed, don't they? They need somewhere where maybe you study and then there's, oh, I, if I'm studying here, I can then, you know, potentially train with this team or I can go on to play for that team. And then that from that, I might be able to do a national. There's, everyone needs a pathway. Do you think with the Celtic Challenge obviously growing and hopefully will continue to do so and be incredibly strong, will that help with people either wanting to come here or being a part of, I guess, rugby up in Scotland? Yeah, yeah, I hope so. Um, I think you're right. It's, it's, it is, it, it was designed to uh, bridge that gap, wasn't it? And whilst we can help produce players at box level, there was still a gap between what box rugby can prepare them for and, and what international rugby is. And I do think Celtic Challenge has now bridged that gap and I think it'll only continue to grow and get better and better. And yeah, it's an exciting time for that, that sort of project over the next few years. And in terms of obviously the Empower stuff, again, the reason we're all here today, what difference have you seen in terms of, obviously we've spoken to the girls about the Player Connect, like how's that impacted you, your day to day, how you plan the sessions that you then put on and just, I guess, probably just getting to know the girls a bit better as well in terms of how they're feeling and, and what they're up to. Yeah, I think they mentioned it. I definitely was a, a um, monitoring nag, <laughs> uh, that's for sure. Um, but yeah, it definitely helps. It just means that I can pick up things um, less so these guys because some of their gym sessions aren't with us, but we do quite early morning sessions in our, our uni gym sessions. So it just means I can pick up. Maybe somebody's not slept that well or you know, they've only put a few hours sleep. I'm like, why? Like, I was in the library till three, four in the morning. So then we can be like, oh, just go a little bit lighter this morning. It's a heavy session. Let's not. Did be... that always happen on a Thursday? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thankfully, we don't have to do sessions on a Thursday. <laughs> I think it'd just be me. <laughs> but yeah, it just helps you. Just make sure that you can um, provide for them the best that possibly can. We're not just pushing them all the time and um, that we can just make sure that they're fit and healthy and they're ready to go on a pitch on a Wednesday for us. Makes such a difference. I don't know about you guys. When I was at uni, that nothing. It was like, well, we've got training yeah. sessions, so do it. Um, obviously, the other thing that Vodafone provides through this is a bursary. Yep. What have you guys done with your bit of money? How have you spent it? How useful has that been? Yeah, we so we've gone video analysis side of things. Um, one of the things from being involved with national programs is the ability to have different angles and, and look at things from either a game perspective or training. So it's mainly around games at the moment. So some equipment that allows us to have a double angle from the side and then something from behind as well, which from a coach's perspective and the players as well to analyse makes a huge difference. Massive difference. You ever watched the wide angle? <laughs> I was literally just waiting for this. <laughs> we Sorry. were joking about this. We were, when was it? I think it was after we played Italy. We were all sat in the bus and like I happened to be beside. I think like Melly came yeah. up and sat with me, Rona and Tom. Also, I was watching with all the backs, and I was like, "Why are you watching on angle four? I was like, "What's going on here? Get tight. You can see the next angle, gritty, four, like. angle four is the best. <laughs> just, like, like, an, just ants <laughs> running around. What's <laughs> happening? Literally, like, sorry. Um, no." I, I do watch it the wide angle. You gotta watch the tight angle first. Like no. I want to no. see the contact <laughs> straight <laughs> to wide. I know, man. Bigger was, picture. I was literally like, this is the last time I'm watching the game back with a load of backs. <laughs> um, just going back a bit to obviously the Celtic Challenge. You basically set that program up. Is that fair to say? Um, I was brought in as as the head coach, and there was a lot of stuff thrown thrown at you at a very short space of time, and you kind of just had to get on with it and get started. So yeah, when the, the thistles last year was uh, brought on then and then uh, stayed involved and got the opportunity to coach Edinburgh. So we maybe had about four or five weeks uh, pre the first game to get a group of players together um, and just get everything as much as we could in, in place for the season. And as three very proud Scottish people, how good is it to Are you see... talking about yourself in that? <laughs> oh, sorry, no, that's four. 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 <laughs> <laughs> It's three <laughs> very proud. So what you wear? <laughs> <laughs> I was like, one. <laughs> <laughs> I was just going to say, it's three very sc uh, proud Scottish people. How good is it to have the backing of Edinburgh Rugby and Glasgow Rugby involved in that? Because they're like iconic Scottish rugby brands, right? Yeah, no, 100%. I think um, it's massive and I think it's 100% needed for us to, to grow the game in Scotland. We need more professional setups. Like I said, like Edinburgh, Edinburgh University are probably the only kind of professional club set up um, prior to that. And I think, like you say, like their their household names, their their brands that have got a setup that is kind of 
there and ready to be used. And I think, like, I've grown up with Glasgow Warriors, like, both my brothers were involved there. My dad played for Glasgow when he was younger. So it's, like, a team I've grown up with as well. And, like, I think for me, like, it's quite cool to see that that's an opportunity for, for me at some point in my career as well. Um, so I think that's really nice. And I think it'll probably, I know in a lot of the girls that like, we've talked about it quite a lot, like, eventually, hopefully will attract more players to, to play up here and give us an opportunity to, to grow the game up here and, and also the strength of the national team as well. That was going to be my next question. Is oh, it sorry. something that, <laughs> like, incentivizes you guys? Not Maybe not incentivizes, but there's, like, that little itch that you're like, well, that's where I came from. I would love to go and represent. I think it's... I mean, it's don't like leave Loughborough too soon, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> don't love it, I die. No, I don't know. It's, it's, it's one of those, like, I think we have to get the balance right. Like, I think there would be absolutely no point in all of us getting moved up here next season because, like, we've talked this whole podcast about how amazing it is for people like Kieran Nicole to get these opportunities in that Celtic challenge to then feed into the national team and if you just made everyone in the Scotland team come up and play in Glasgow and Edinburgh we wouldn't be picking out those talents we wouldn't be finding those talents so I think it's a it's definitely a balance between yeah we want to grow the game in Scotland and yeah we want to improve that standard and yeah a lot of us would love to move home as well as we love Scotland <laughs> um it's, it's it's about getting the balance on what's right for the individual and I think what point they're at in their career probably wouldn't make sense for an old gal like myself to <laughs> to, to, to move uh, up here right now but I think I would love to potentially finish out my my career here this is an impossible question I think but if everyone in the current Scotland team went back to either Edinburgh or Glasgow who would win Edinburgh well uh, how are you uh, picking well it depends where yeah. you're from you, or who you, who you choose yeah wait I think the majority of people in like Scotland east team, versus west there's like only your depends on this, like state of origin. Or yeah. Like, like where so you said Edinburgh. Yeah. And you're a Glaswegian too yeah. now. Yeah. There's not many of us. But then, like, who gets who gets the borders? Glasgow girl. They'll, they'll choose Edinburgh if they got to yeah. choose. Yeah. It depends whether they get to choose. So you can have a Babas <laughs> team. Can of worms, yeah. isn't it? It is a can of worms because we we have talked about it quite we a lot. Have talked about it quite a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and most people want to play for Edinburgh because we obviously spend all of our time in Edinburgh. We all love Edinburgh. I love Edinburgh, even as a proud mm. Glaswegian. Um, not that you can tell by my accent. <laughs> um, Sound English these days. <laughs> Too far. But, so we all went to watch the um, game at Christmas, mm. didn't we? Mm. And we were all kind of like, when we saw, saw everyone running out in new strips, we were like, God, I, I want to play. I know. <laughs> like, it was, it's going to happen soon. Mm. But like, yeah, it was very cool to see like the crowd. Yeah. Oh, the, that, that game was, was class. Like 2000. And I, I, I think it could have been more. And I do think yeah. like this year, um, obviously there'll be a home and away fixture. So one over in Scotsdale, one one in Edinburgh. And I think that, I, I do think if that one is linked again to the 1872 Cup around that Christmas period, there's a real chance of selling out the hive. Like I, I genuinely think it's a, a real opportunity. Uh, but having you guys there watching was... was could you like, hear us? Yeah. Every time Jenny <laughs> touched Anytime the ball. Anytime Max <laughs> felt <like> anything. <laughs> But that was just so cool as well for, for the players, yeah. again, to know that you were all there supporting. And I think it was maybe the second game we were walking back down the tunnel and people were still standing around. And there's Tomo on the other side, like, yeah. waiting for like people to walk past. Yeah. And I was like, that's so cool. Obviously, next year, Celtic Challenge is going to be expanded. Can you talk us through that and how much better, hopefully, that will be? Yeah, so it's going to go to home and away. So this year, it was play everyone once and then a top three Top three, bottom three, more more high quality games, so ten instead of seven, which again help will help build into the Six Nations for players. So another great opportunity for everyone. Amazing. Hopefully that will just continue to grow and grow. We've already touched on it a little bit, but obviously you represented Scotland. These girls represented Scotland. You've been able to coach so many of them. How proud are you of this current Scotland crop and obviously the players that you've luckily been able to have a hand in as well? Yeah, like you see it all the time and, and like Rach and, and Nelly talk about it, you know, how, how close the group is. And I was I was lucky enough to go to the World Cup as the, the intern. So I went through that with, with these guys and those real, real tough moments at that World Cup out there. And, um, you know, there's a picture of mm. um, Nelly after one of the games and, you know, just giving her a hug. And so I've, I've been feel like I've been through it a little bit. So to see the, you know, the progress and the success that's happening now in the, the series of wins, uh, it's just brilliant to see and it's no more than they deserve. Completely agree. 
We love Scotland. <laughs> <laughs> Just to you guys, obviously, on the Six Nations, beat Wales, super close against a very strong French team, a sold out crowd against England, obviously came up short against Ireland. Like, where do you pitch we this? Maybe Italy away as well. Sorry. It's <laughs> <laughs> quite a lot for me to remember. <laughs> I've I also you were a big fan. Seven match and beat and run. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> Beat Italy, yeah. First time in 25 years. First time one. in 25 years. Oh, that was a big one, actually. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. First time we in Cardiff in, in Wales in 20 years. Okay, well, you contextualise yourself. <laughs> you tell us about Can you season. tell? <laughs> Can you tell? <laughs> I've spent the last week just telling myself that these things have happened because I'm still... But that's my question. Like, yeah. where, where do you... How, where, how do you look back on that Six Nations now? Because I actually asked you earlier, I said, if that Ireland game had been at the beginning of the championship and then everything had happened, would you view it differently? And you potentially said yes. Yeah, I think so. I think I was pretty numb at full time. Like, just because I I do think it was there for us to take. It could have gone either way. And, like, I, I do think we let ourselves down a little bit. And I think that's what made it so tough. Like, I think, like, some decision-making aspects on probably my part. And also, like, just we probably didn't do what we set out to do mm -hmm. um, in a lot of ways. So, like, I just felt we weren't robbed because they deserve to win the game because they got it right. But I felt like unfinished, if that makes sense. <laughs> frustrated, like, weren't frustrated. we? Frustrated. I needed another 10 minutes because I, and but I also don't know if we would have done it in another 10 minutes because I do feel like we kind of lost our heads a little bit in terms of what we were. So like, I felt very numb afterwards and I kind of couldn't see the bigger picture at all. Um, and I just felt, it felt like 12 months ago when we were on the end of a 12 match losing streak. Like that's where it took me straight back to. And it took me like, probably until like yesterday, to be honest, like till I was like, no, like we actually have achieved, and like when I think about it, like I was in a pretty low place 12 months ago off the back of that. And like, not just me, my, like us as a squad and, and members within it. And like, I think when I actually look at it, like we, this in the last 12 months alone, like we've like say, first time we've won seven games in a row since 2001. First time we've won a trophy since 2001. First time we beat Wales away in 25 years or 20 years, Italy away in 25 years. Like, we've done a huge amount and we have grown, but I think we're also not really happy that we're just happy to turn up and make up the numbers anymore. And like, I think that's why- that's feel, something in itself, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, and like, you know, like you've, like you guys, we're obviously friends with loads of the, you lot, <laughs> down south. You can't say um, <laughs> English. Oh, English. <laughs> I'm kidding, I'm gonna get canceled. Um, <laughs> when did you go back to Love for Tune? <laughs> I, no, you know I love the guys. I'm a big English supporter, but I'm just too fine. Um, and like you, like I remember like you guys always used to say like the way that we would talk about ourselves was half of our problem. And like, I think the way that we probably viewed ourselves um, and like we used to make jokes about ourselves and stuff like that, because that was our way of coping. But I, we're definitely not there now. And I think that's why it hurts so bad. Um, but I think, like you say, when you contextualise it into actually how far we've come and, and all those bits and, and how easy some of the bits are to fix, um, which makes it frustrating as well. Um, yeah. Like I it, think it's, our expectations are just higher of ourselves yeah. now, aren't they? 100%. Um, Deservedly so. Yeah. And like, we probably, we won those two games, but we still didn't, like a couple of years ago, we would have celebrated those like... Yeah, but actually, well, last it was year just we, won it. Too. we were quite like yeah. we we're pretty chill about it. Yeah, um, and I think that shows how far we've come as well. Yeah. Um but there's the like I think like you say frustration was the overall feeling, but there are a lot of positives to take, which we've we have spoken about. But yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I can print this <laughs> list off for you if you want because there's some. It's okay, I've got it literally tattooed. <laughs> some hella <laughs> achievements on here. I think you've had an awesome year as Scotland that last game. Let the frustration drive you. Yeah. That's what I say. <laughs> Look, the, next, the exactly. most important bit is, what is it, 18 months time, is it? Is that what World the World Cup is? Something like that. Yeah, yeah. that was good. good guess. Uh, but like, that's like what we are ultimately working towards. Um, and also, al although we didn't necessarily achieve automatic qualification at the weekend, like I'm pretty certain we'll be there. And I think that's what we need to to drive us and that's where we need to peak and like it's probably a good time for us to realize that there's certain areas of our game that aren't where they need to be got a massive opportunity at wxv to go and and hopefully have the ball an awful lot and, and get opportunities to improve those areas and then another six nations to build against some of the best teams in the world and then that's it can you tell that i have spent yeah yeah <laughs> but i think like <laughs> knowing you guys having watched you guys and also having been up here for the day i think yeah. scottish rugby is in a very very good place so shanks thank you so much for having yeah. us and for everything that you're doing for the game of rugby Ooh. 
Now, Scotty, thank you so much for joining us and being a part of our Empower Her program. Love it. Thank We've you. We've loved our time up here in Edinburgh. We have been the good, the scars, and the rugby in partnership with our good friends at Vodafone. Oh.